In this video, we're going to talk about perpetual inventory. So perpetual inventory is basically an inventory system where we're going to continuously update the inventory account. Every time we have a purchase of inventory, we have a sale of inventory, we're going to make a journal entry that's going to reflect the change that's occurred in the inventory account. Now this is in contrast to the periodic inventory system where we're only going to update inventory account at the end of the period, whether it be a quarter, the year, and so forth. And we'll get into the differences between perpetual and periodic inventory systems in another video. But right now, let's just understand how the perpetual system works and the journal entries we'd have to make. So let's say that you start out with a beginning inventory of 50 units of some good, and you have, let's say, it cost you $5 a unit to purchase that inventory. So that inventory would be on your books, the beginning balance, would be $250. So I just took 50 units times $5 a unit. That was your cost to purchase the inventory. So that's what you start with is $250. And then you decide to make a purchase. You're going to buy some more inventory. And it costs the same price as the, the inventory you already have. It's $5 a unit. And so you're going to purchase 800 units of that inventory. So that will be $4,000. So we just take the 800 units and multiply it by the $5 a unit. That's all I did here. Now let's think about the journal entry and how that's going to play out. Now remember, we said that we're going to continuously update this inventory account. Inventory is an asset, so it's going to increase with a debit. So we're going to debit inventory for $4,000. Now what are we going to credit? Well, that depends. Are we paying cash? Are we... Are we, is, is it a credit account, accounts payable? We'll just say in our case that it's cash. We pay cash for the inventory, so we credit cash for $4,000. So an inventory account, the inventory account went up, that's an asset. Cash went down, that's an asset. So there's been no change in our assets in this example. So now we decide, after we've made the purchase, now we've added this $4,000 worth of inventory to our original $250 worth, and now we make a sale. So we sell 750 units of inventory, and we sell that, that for $12 a unit. So now we're going to actually make a bigger journal entry. We're going to have to reflect what happens to the inventory, just like before. We're going to update the inventory account, but we also have to record the sale. So let's take a look at, at how our journal entry will play out here. And you can think about it as uh, two separate entry, entries, if you'd like or just one big one, and I'll just, I'll, we'll make it like two separate entries. So we'll have accounts receivable. We're gonna record the sale first. We're gonna debit account receivable. Assume we didn't get cash for the units. Uh, we just we just have the money that's it's gonna come in at some point in the future. We know this uh, person, we deal with them, and they're gonna give us $9,000 at some point in the future. And so we debit our accounts receivable, and then we credit sales for $9,000. And if you're wondering, well, where did that $9,000 come from? Well, we took 750 and we multiplied that by $12 a unit. So that's where we got $9,000. So we debit account receivable and we credit sales. That's one journal entry. Now we have to make the journal entry like we did before with the inventory. However, before we were purchasing inventory, so we were adding it. So we were increasing it with a debit. But now we're actually getting some inventory off the books. And so we're getting rid of 750 units, which had a cost of $5 a unit. So if we multiply 750 times 5, we're going to get 3,750. And so that's what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to debit cost of goods sold. We're going to debit cost of goods sold for $3,750, and then we're going to credit inventory for the same amount, for $3,750. So this difference here, basically we, we, we're taking in $9,000 and we're getting rid of $3,750 worth of, of inventory. That's our profit, right? Because we sold the units for $12 a unit and we paid $5 a unit to buy them. So it's, it makes sense that our sales would be higher than the amount of inventory that we're getting rid of in this case. So. We've got these two separate entries here, or you can think of it as one big journal entry. And now we want to compute our ending inventory. So for our ending inventory, there's a couple different ways that we can do it. So one thing we can do is we can say, look, we started 
with $250 worth of inventory, right? We added $4,000 worth when we made that purchase. And then we got rid of $3,750 worth, right? So what we could, we could do is just say 250, that was the beginning balance, plus 4,000 minus 3,750. And that's going to give us $500. So that would be our ending inventory. Another way you could do it is you could look at the number of units because all the units have the same cost when we purchase them. So we could say, okay, we had 50 units to start with, then we added, we bought 800, and then we got rid of 750. And so that will give us 100, what do we have, 100 units there? 100 units, and that was at $5 a unit was the cost. So we take 100 units that are remaining in our ending inventory, and they were $5 each to, in terms of the cost, so that also gives us $500. So either way, we get to the same place. So that's how we do the perpetual inventory system. We're making these uh, adjustments to the inventory account as we, we buy and sell inventory. Now, a couple of notes, just things to, to, to think about, is that freight in, if there's any freight in cost, that that's actually going to be debited directly to our inventory account as it comes up, if, assuming we have freight in. And any purchase returns, purchase allowances, purchase discounts that we have, those are also going to be run directly through the inventory account. In our next video, we're going to talk about how we would do things under the periodic inventory system.